Hey, uh, good morning. Thank you all for being here. Uh, this is our annual meeting. Uh, being that there is a quorum established, I will call the meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business on our agenda is to approve the minutes of our July 2022 semi-annual meeting. So if you have not, please look those over and I will entertain any additions or any corrections. We have a motion to accept the uh, minutes as printed. Do we have a second? All in favor, indicate by raising your hand. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. The me our minutes are approved. All right, let's move along to the uh, president's report. I have to chuckle. You know, every year I do these things, I always print them so small and they look so small on a page. This year I went the other way, so you probably can read it without your glasses. At any rate, I'd like to read this for you. Uh, this is my sixth and last council president's report. This is my second three-year term on council, and I will have to step down. I've enjoyed being part of the leadership of our church. I was told by people before me that there were tough questions that had to be addressed about our church. I wish I could tell you that those questions have been resolved. They still remain, and in some cases, have actually gotten worse. Not due to lack of discussion or effort, but these questions exist in two parts. Part one, what our heart tells us to do, and part two, what logic and reason tells us we should do. That, my friends, are where we are at today. The MET team has finished their process. The council has approved their efforts and will soon forward it to the Synod. Then begins the call process. Where that leads us to, we do not know. For now, our church is financially stable and things will continue as always. How long that will last, I cannot tell you. In the meantime, I would ask all of us to pray for God's guidance as we seek answers to these questions. I hope when we find those answers, it will be in the best interest of our church and every one of us. In faith, Rick Miller, Council President. That was a very difficult report for me to write because we've had so many pressing issues. Uh, in the face of the COVID epidemic, having to alter drip dramatically what we do and how we do it in our church. Then the uh, somewhat unexpected retirement of Pastor Sherry, the quest to try to find an interim, and I think we were very lucky to have had Pastor Ron here for that. I think he was the right guy at the right time. As you all know, he's a straight shooter, and I think that he approached all of our problems in that way. The Met team, had a difficult thing to do. Updating that form was the easy part, but to put forth a truthful evaluation of what our church needs and what the future is, is extremely difficult. So I'm very happy that they got through that and I know it wasn't an, an easy process. And now that has been forwarded to the Synod, we await the approval of the Bishop. And from that point, I guess the want ad goes out and we will see what the response is. And we can only hope really for the best results in that respect. So at this point, uh, we'll move along to committee reports. Are there any people that want to give an oral report for their committees? Laura, you had something you wanted to share? Well, I'm not sure if this is a committee or not, but it, it perhaps should be. 
Um, I did write up something that didn't quite make it into the annual report, but it's in the mailboxes um, if you pick it up or if you've picked it up already. Um, I titled it Advocatus Diaboli, The Devil's Advocate, because I feel very hopeful about our church, but I also see so many limitations from being on the council. Also, this is my sixth year, so I will be off in June, and um, I look forward to seeing other leaders step up and um, enjoy the, the fruits of the labor of the council is wonderful, and being a part of this group of, you know, wisdom and knowledge has been um, amazing for me. And even just that I'm able to stand up here and talk to you and not be shaking so much is really good. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Devil's Advocate, um, a little history, this was for Gail King, who isn't here, um, is in the 1600s, um, the... Um, England, or the Catholic Church, brought in an uh, attorney to um, determine sainthood of different people. And they were um, there to determine, should they be allowed sainthood? And the um, most recent use of it um, that um, is, anyways, on the internet anyway, is uh, uh, Mother Teresa in um, 1984, they brought in an advocate to s discount her sainthood. So I thought that was really interesting because what I feel about this church is it's, it's a home and we all get together and it's a lovely, wonderful group of people and we do good things, but it seems like we are at a point where the things we're doing is trying to keep this building together and maybe us together to keep us together for sure. Um, but is that the best use of our own, um, not sainthood, but um, you know, the purposes that we want to fulfill in the world as we move forward. Is this church giving us what we all need? I mean, we come here every Sunday and I know for my folks, that's what they want. You know, they want to be able to come here. They maybe might want to see baptisms, weddings, and be able to have funerals here. Hopefully that will be um, based on the financials that we have, you know, we have five years at this point that we can go on. But are we reaching anybody? Are we out? Are we doing other things in the world? I know we are, but that's the devil's advocate that I'm looking for, that we need to think about. Um, do we gather together to study the word of God? We, um, we want to offer support to the community. Um, do we guide our children to know God, to know the Ten Commandments? There isn't a lot of children, but we do have some that I think we're guiding a bit, at least mom and grandma are doing a good job of. Um, we have relationships here for our spiritual growth. And I can attest to um, my uh, own financial growth and uh, my business itself is supported a lot by this community. Um, do we have a gathering space? We do have that. So our call committee is going to be out there and set guidelines for our pastor. Um, but do we have a plan of outreach if we're going to keep this going? And if we aren't going to keep this going, should we somehow have maybe a five-year plan for this church based on the finances 
that we have, or do we just go on faith and continue as is? So um, that's my spiel on being a devil's advocate. Okay, thank you, Laura. That gives us, uh, I think there were several questions in there that we all need to think about in a very serious manner as we, as we move forward with this process. Um, is there any other buddy that would like to give a committee report at this time? Uh, Jim, would you like to say something on behalf of the Met Committee? As far as the MET committee goes, I want to thank everyone for your efforts. Uh, Tom, Ruby, Julie, I'm going around the room. Janet and Karen for your efforts. Uh, I want to thank Laura for verbalizing what the MET committee pondered since last August. We've asked the questions, we've prayed for answers, You've given us input, and we've appreciated tremendously what you have done to help us set our first five-year plan, if you will. Um, just a quick recap, although it's been in a couple of the newsletters. We started in August. We had a line in the sand of uh, middle January to accomplish the MSP. Uh, we missed it only by a month. Uh, I spoke with Pastor Ron just uh, beginning of this week, yes. Um, part of the MET process is we submit electronically our resume as a church, and we did that last Sunday electronically only to find out there was one more step. There's always another step. <laughs> that step required us to reach out to Pastor Ron again. He had to craft a confidential recommendation for our church. Uh, I did reach him uh, Monday, uh, Sunday evening rather, that he was honored to do that. And he was, in his words, uh, honest. Uh, but graciously agreed to do that for us. He has since then submitted his confidential recommendation to the Synod. Uh, Tom, our auditor of, of note, <laughs> checked again. Uh, we have yet to see it transfer, to have it recognized that Pastor Ron's electronic recommendation has been filed. Uh, I will follow up with Pastor Kristen tomorrow to find out what the delay is. Uh, but uh, again, I'm saying this multiple times, I can't thank the congregation, I can't thank the Met Committee, and quite honestly, the whole church council who spent a good amount of time reviewing what we did, buying what we were selling, and gave their stamp of approval. So we're moving forward. I thought we had a next step and a next step. Step forward, step back, step forward. And uh, the hokey pokey, yeah. <laughs> but the synod, the synod knows we're here. There are 28 openings in the greater Milwaukee Synod for pastors. Some of our churches that are near us are experiencing the same difficulty we have in attracting uh, new parishioners, congregation members. But we are small but feisty. I didn't put that in our, in our resume. Uh, but steadfast in wanting to remain together as a place of worship for our Lord. You've told us that. Questions are hard. Answers are even harder but we appreciate tremendously the work 
that you've given us and the talents that God gave us to complete this MSP, Mission Site Profile. Thank you for that. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, uh, let us know. Uh, but I will keep you posted. You're not, you're not done with me yet, Lamette. <laughs> I will keep you all posted on what we find out. And uh, that, I think, is a positive conclusion for us. Any, anybody have questions? Hearing none, I'll sit down. Oh. Was there a new group of tech or apps for the, the committee to follow the capture? Or is that part of MET? No, that's not part of MET. MET was a mission exploration team was there to do our profile. Uh, the call committee has been identified by by our council, and I don't know if they're ready for announcing yet. That's not, that not me. But yes, there is one, there is a committee uh, set up. Thank you for what you did in this committee. Yes. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, just so everybody is aware of it, the call committee is in place. Uh, these people have graciously volunteered to uh, be part of this process, and that will be Patty Bastimer, uh, Greg Hafman, and Rob, and uh, Sherry Munger. I felt it was very important. We, I gave a lot of thought, really, to asking these people because I think there's aspects of our church that need to be represented accurately when we interview a new a new pastor. And I think that these people give us that ability. So if we don't have any further uh, committee reports, I will call upon Patty for the financial report and the budget presentation. Hello, everyone. You know, this is always my favorite thing. <laughs> and I'll, I'll answer this question first. This is a broken wrist, trying to be young and playing pickleball for the very first time. Ugh. And I hit the floor, and it not the ball. So <laughs> anyway, I'm OK. It's all fixable. <laughs> um, I wish I could say that about the church, but. <laughs> And um, we are doing fine financially at this point for one reason, and that's because we don't have a pastor. Um, because the cost of an inner or a substitute pastor is, you know, can run anywhere from 800 to 1,000 a month. And the cost of having a pastor just budgeting. Um, when you go through the synod, it's not just the salary. Um, if you hire a person who is not on Medicare, then there's insurance, disability, um, and life, and pension, and it it all adds up to probably if we if we hired a pastor who wasn't um, on Medicare yet for only the amount of hours that we had for Pastor Sherry, it would be um, probably around three thousand a month instead of a thousand a month, and we are budgeting to have a profit with. Um, only showing four months of the year as having a pastor. But if you added uh, an extra 2,000 a month throughout a year, that's 24,000 more a year, um, which would take away any profit we have and would put us in a lost position. And even if we, um, even if we hired a pastor on, that was on Medicare, you still have to give them all the same benefits, um, it, except in, 
It's not a straight regular insurance, it's a Medicare supplement, but it's still insurance. But it would save probably 5,000 a year, um, which would, we'd still be in a negative position on a monthly basis. Um, and that's without, um, that's with our income staying as it is. And that's the another, that's the second biggest um, variable in our fin finances, and that's all of you guys. Are we all gonna be here? Are we all gonna be financially viable? Um, it, that's just a guess. So when I budgeted, I budgeted for, if you look at the budget um, on the sheet, you'll see how much less I budgeted for as income from last year to this year. And that's because we lost people. And that won't change. So um, that's just it. There is nothing you can do about that. So I just give it my best guess based on last year. Um, so if you add a full-time, not a, a part-time pastor to less income, over time, uh, we won't be okay. Uh, but it will be a few years because we have built, because we are only using a substitute pastor, we will be in a profitable position. Um, and because we are, that means that we are actually building up a reserve every month because we, because of that. So, and that's a dilemma too, you know, um, until we decide as a church what our future is going to be. Um, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, I will, put out in the newsletter on a more regular basis as I get information regarding what our finances will be or if they are going to change because of something that happens dramatically, I will let everyone know in the newsletter with a little blurb. So if you don't hear from me in the newsletter, that's a good thing. Um, so. I guess that's it. And I'm if, if you guys ever have any questions, and right now I'm going to open it up, if you have any questions about any of the numbers, any of the finances at all, just raise your hand, and I'll attempt to explain it. So no questions. And that's at any point in time. Just get in touch with me, and I'll, I'll throw numbers at you. <laughs> And that's it. That's all I've got. It's um, it's not a it's a happy situation right now because we don't have to worry about paying the bills, and we have a surplus. The future is questionable, and it's anybody's question, and we, I have no answers for that. So, thank you. Did I take all mine, or is this somebody else's? Did I take yours? Or is this yours? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, having heard the financial report and being given the budget, uh, I will entertain a motion for acceptance. I move to accept. And Chloe, are you our second? Yes, sir. All in favor, indicate by raising your hand. All in, opposed, raise your hand. Okay, thank you, Patty, for everything that you do. Uh, I've said this before, but uh, when Patty attends our council meeting, she breaks these things down in a very simplistic manner that even people like myself that are not really a numbers person can understand. So hopefully all of you, uh, you know, have at least some good idea of what's going on financially. Uh, under old business, uh, I guess we'll just quickly go through this, um, being the church during the pandemic. Um, I think we all should be proud of what we've done. From the moment that the pandemic hit, when we were having parking lot services, when we're having outdoor services, then the transition back in to the church, then bringing back other things such as coffee hour, 
Um, I think we've done a wonderful job. I think it would have been very easy to become very disillusioned and just stop showing up and raise your hands and say, why bother? But that was not the case. In fact, some of the parking lot services had more people than what we get on the indoor services. So I, for one, am very appreciative of that. Um, I think everybody that's hung in there, uh, everybody should be proud of themselves, and especially the people that, that handle the leadership aspects of our church. Uh, it's been very difficult. Um, knowing what to do and believing what you're doing are two different things. And as, as Patty alluded to with our finances, everything right now is very stable, but we don't know really what the future you know, brings. Uh, I think some of the additions that came out of the pandemic, the audiovisual equipment that you see, the center was generous in giving us quite a bit of money for that, and then we supplemented it. We continue to broadcast on our FM band every Sunday. We do uh, upload our services to YouTube and sometimes to Facebook. Uh, hopefully, some of our people that are snowbirds or people that can no longer attend church are benefiting from that. So that's, that's another positive that I think came out of the uh, pandemic. Um, and I think that really capsulizes it. There's really not much more you know, that we can say about that. COVID's become part of our lives now. And as we have to deal with that, I think we are more educated and I think we do it more efficiently. Moving along to new business, uh, we're not going to waste a lot of time on this, but I'll make you aware of this. Uh, we need to appoint two assembly delegates to the Synod Assembly. Now, keep in mind, we have not had a, a, a permanent pastor. Whether we attend this or not, it's not that big of a deal. But certainly, if we do have two people that want to attend and then bring whatever information is passed along there back to us, that would be beneficial. So if you're interested, let me know, let one of the council members know, and we will take it from there. Uh, also, this year we will have three council members that are going off due to, the, to our bylaw requirements. Let me just find it in here. All right. Laura Boyden will be going off. She is our vice president. I will be going off. I've done two back-to-back -back terms. And Jeanette Klitsky is going off. Now, she is on her first term. We will try to hit her up for a second term. So the best case scenario is we need two people to replace Laura and myself. Um, whether you've never done this or whether you've done this in the past, I would encourage you to give it some serious thought about participating. This coming year is going to be very critical for us. Uh, you know, I don't think that we can repeat that enough times, but there's going to be some difficult choices made, uh, and hopefully things are going to work out in a positive way for us. But the council is going to be an intricate part of that. They're kind of the, guide, kind of the guiding force here. So if you do have any interest, please let me know or any other council member know. And the council will also uh, then in turn come up with a, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, Nom that's it, the nominating committee. Uh, and then uh, if we do have any prospective candidates, that will be forwarded to the congregation in a timely manner. Other than that, that brings us really to the end of our agenda. Uh, updates. I think Jim has covered most of the really important updates, as did Patty with the financial aspect. Does anybody have anything else to bring up at this time? Sue? Okay. In the directory, is your cell phone number in there also? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, we'll make sure that that's taken care of. All right. Any comments, any questions at this time before I entertain a motion to adjourn? We will be adjourned. Okay. Second. Wendy, did you have a question?
Uh, thank you. It's good to see you here today. All right, all those in favor of adjournment? We're adjourned. Thank you for coming. <laughs>